Hey, but it's Kevin Smith. Hey! Thank you, Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Your card back. Thank you, sir. Thank you. Hang on your card for next time. Uh, I do, I do. I'm working on my next hosting gig. Nice. You did a good job, actually. Yeah. The show is going to become a half hour at that point. Really? What are yeah. you doing? This is what we're going to do. Half hour news. I'm going to go in the green room, smoke a lot of weed. <laughs> <laughs> next half hour, you're all on your own. The key, dude, trust me, is to do that before you go. Is that there. it? Is that why the show is Is that why you do that stretch? In very the mellow. <laughs> I'm, I'm very mellow. Um, I love this show. I, as you know, I love coming to the show. There's nothing, and I don't just say this because I'm here and talking to you, or actually, I do because I've never said it to anybody else. <laughs> But it is such an enjoyable show. It's like, I was saying to somebody, God, I wish they had something like it in the States. I'm like, I'm so glad they don't, because it would not be this. It's unique. It's very unique. So Thank I like you. coming here. We're it's having cool. fun. We're and having fun. I, I, the one thing I hate, though, you know, is I hate sitting on the stage. I feel so fat. <laughs> <laughs> on the stage? We should just stand. Let's stand, stand for the interview. interview. Yeah, let's We can stand for part of the interview. Because when I stand, the gut just goes down <laughs> to my knees. So, you know. Well, how about, uh, if we sit, we'll just shoot higher. No, I'm just going to stand. You <laughs> <laughs> um, uh, you got a Bruce Willis film. I do. I mean, I know you... Well, you, you, film is, you know... You movie. Yeah. yeah <laughs> Let's movie. be careful. When you say film, it's like, really? Is it like Schindler's List? <laughs> <laughs> it's not. It's called Cop Out, it you know? Cop and out. before that, it was called A Couple of Dicks. So, That's right. You know, it's fun, though. It's a popcorn movie. And I, I got to make a popcorn movie, which I, I enjoy doing. I'm not really known for that. I tend to kind of not make films for years, people are like, he's not a director. And they're absolutely right. What I figured out, uh, Strombo, after 15 years of doing it, is I'm not the director. That wasn't what I was born to do. It's something that I do, and I've gotten yeah. good at over the years. But in the beginning, I didn't make films as much. I rip open my chest, pull out fatty chunks of my heart, put it between two platters, project it, and be like, what do you think? And you would find a percentage of the people out there totally identify with that. Yes. You know, they're just like, oh my God, you're speaking my language. For the people that don't identify with it at all, those cats are just like, he's not a director. And they're right. For years, they've been right. They're dicks for saying it, but they're absolutely, <laughs> absolutely right. And, and this was a chance for me to actually go out there and see if I could make a movie by somebody else's standard. Because I like to think of it, and I can only do the analogy up here in Canada, so I've been doing it for the last two days like crazy. Because once I go to the States, they're going to be like, huh? For the last 15 years, I've been playing in the WHA. Yep. This is an NHL game right here. Right. And, and you can, I, I was happy in my own rink and I loved it and I've got my own little audience. It's great and fun to do, but there are definitely moments over the last 15 years where you look over there and go like, what's it like over there? I wonder if I could play in that game. And cop out for me when I was all said and done with it. I was like, you know what? I could skate with the big boys if I wanted to. So when you look over there saying, I wonder, I wonder what it probably means is that you're not sure if you can, right? Totally. It's, it comes from a place of utter... Look, I mean, look at all the movies I've made so far. I, it's almost akin to making the movies in a childproof house. And, and as much as there are no edges everywhere, all the plug, the electric sockets are plugged up. I think Dogma, was in, I think Dogma was in a safe film, but wasn't What it? I mean by, by the safety of it all, I'm sorry, I sweat profusely. Okay. Um, what I mean by the, by the safety of it all is it was my world. I created right. everything. I, I was the, you know, it's like playing The Sims, but as, a, as making a movie. <laughs> This, doing Cop Out, it was like making a movie not in a childproof house, where there were tons of swords, broken glass, acid, um, dog poop everywhere. <laughs> and, you know, it was just about navigating through it and whatnot. And it's, sometimes it's nice to kind of challenge yourself, but why I would never challenge myself before? I was like, why bother? I mean, look at me, George. I never challenged myself ever, obviously. <laughs> so why would I do it in my job? And so I'm sitting there going, maybe if I pushed a little harder, it might be different. But I was afraid to push. Because I'm like, I do this so well. Why, why try anything else? Because what if I fail? But I don't know, 15 years in, you start getting bored of yourself. And you're like, maybe it'd be better to fail at something different than like keep succeeding at the same thing I do over Has and over again. Has somebody else done it? Did you look at somebody else who took a step and said, you yeah. they pulled it off? You know, I mean, he wasn't a guy <clears throat> who worked nearly as much as I did right away. But um, uh, the fellow who did, what's his name? He's, now I'm escaping, uh, uh, spacing on his name. The guy that just did Adventureland. Yeah. Um, oh, yeah, yeah, I forget. Greg, Greg Matola. Greg Mottola did a movie years ago called The Day Trippers. Wonderful little indie film and very indicative of indie films in the 90s. Years later, he wound up making a movie called Superbad. And I saw him and I was like, man, I couldn't believe that you wound up shooting somebody else's script. And even though it's like, you know, Seth and the Boys is really funny, it's just like, how did you find the courage to do that? And he was just like, I don't know. It just occurred to me that, like, if I didn't direct that, somebody else was going to. And it seemed like it would be fun to do. Mm -hmm. So this kind of was presented to me. And, and I was just like, wow, man. At first, like the normal Kevin Smith, the guy who's made all those movies, was just like, I don't do that kind of thing. I make my own movies that nobody goes to see. Thank you very much. You know? yeah. So, but then I was just like, man, if this dude called me, this is the head of Warner Bros. If this dude called me when I was 16 years old and said, hey, man, would you like to direct a Bruce Willis movie? I would be like, who's 
do I have to suck to make that happen? <laughs> that is amazing. And I feel like now, as I'm like, I'm heading into 40. In August, I'll be, in August I'm going to be 40. Yep. I feel like, why do I keep passing up, like, cool opportunities that they give me? For years, I've been doing, I do my own thing, thanks. I don't want to do that. I don't know, man. Like, the idea of making a Bruce Willis movie and making it with Tracy Morgan and Sean William Scott, like, two dudes I've worked with before, and I know they're fun. Yep. Doing it at Warner Brothers, where I know, like, they're going to blow the doors out trying to sell it. It just seemed like a good time. And I was like, why not try it just once? Had you turned down movies before that, yeah, that you past. saw them on screen and go, man, I could have done that? Yeah, there was one uh, one that's actually similar to this. It's weird. They keep trying to give me cop movies. But there was one called Metro mm -hmm. and one called Showtime that I saw. And at one point, they both came to me. They're like, we would like you to do this. And I was, it was a point in my career where I never in a million years would have considered right. it. And then I saw the movie, like, oof, thank goodness. But this was, <laughs> this was uh, different. Like, I, I read this script, and I was like, wow, this reads like Clerks as Cops, kind of. Yeah. And I kind of had to break it down, because I was, like, you know, intimidated by the fact that years and years, people tell you online, you suck at your job, you're a terrible filmmaker. And you start to believe it. I'm like, they're right, they're right, you know, and I just kind of take it in stride and show Because I know there are a lot of people that do like me, and a lot of people that don't. So, I don't know, here was an opportunity to kind of, to see if I could, if I was a filmmaker. Right. You know, for years I never felt like it, and here was a chance to kind of give it a test run and, and do it on somebody else's dime. And did do you have a scene, way. though, man, where you did a scene and you thought, I'm the guy, I can do this now? Yeah, there was, um, there was a moment, well, I mean, look, I realized I was the guy by the end of the movie because uh, you're, you're dealing with um, circumstances and, and that aren't, necessarily always under your control anymore. I.e., I, I worked with Bruce Willis on the movie. Bruce Willis is a huge movie star yeah. who's used to getting his way all the time. And, and I'm just huge, period. And <laughs> I'm used to getting my way all the time. So there are definitely times where it's just like he saw a different movie than I did and we had to find a way to work together. Because everyone was just like, oh, it must be awesome working with Bruce Willis every day. I was like, it was, but he pushed me. You yeah. know, like in a way, not pushed me like, hey, man, let's do it. Because if he did, I'd be like, oh, don't hit me, don't hit me. You know, <laughs> I'll suck you don't hit me. Um, that's my move, as you can see. Yeah, um, I got one move, and it's that. Um, <laughs> but uh, he pushed me in ways where, you know, it wasn't like he, he just wouldn't settle for the stuff that sometimes I would have settled for. Like, eh, it's all right, it's good enough. That dude, it wasn't good enough for him, you know? And he pushed, and in a way, you were sometimes I needed that. I was as an actor. It's a whole different experience. When you're standing next to him as an actor, you're acting together and yeah. stuff. When you're cast in the role of director, suddenly you're an authority figure, and Bruce does not do well with authority. <laughs> so, you know, suddenly it, it was weird. I, I had a dude in the movie who I was always looking to, like, how did I do, Dad? Did that work? And he would kind of sign off. He would give me, like, the... Or he'd give me the... And then I'd be like, let's go again, everybody. We didn't get it. I can't believe you haven't won an Oscar. I know. It's I can't unbelievable. Believe it. <laughs> I, I've been following him on, uh, on Twitter, and, and you, you were going on about the Oscar nominations. Well, you know... Speaking of the Oscars, speaking mm. of the Oscars, um, uh, this is where you get me to talk about my betters and, and trash them and whatnot. Because yeah, no, well, I love to do that. Do you like to yeah. do that? Yeah, yeah. <laughs> the um, you were on on Twitter. You, I mean, you're honest about it. You were just going. I Whoa. do. Well, I, was, I mean, in a world where they open up the Oscars to ten nominations, which is ridiculous in and of itself. Come on, it's just like you're just creating five more heartbreaks <laughs> for people who are like, I had a chance and I lost. Yeah. Um, so with the five additional slots, you know, you got movies getting in there like District Nine, which is very, very cool. But in a world where, like, you got ten slots, why not Star Trek? Everybody loves Star Trek. That movie worked, like, Star in Trek spades. Was actually it was one really, of the best really movies good. of the year. So on Twitter, I was like, where's Star Trek? And there's a lot of Star Trek support there. I mean, people are like, you're right, where is Star yeah. Trek? Lead us, leader. I was like, no, 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 no. It, it was just conversational, not a Trekkie. Back away, back away. Phasers on stun. Thank you. Thank well, is it, I think this year's Oscars, we call it the Sandra Bullock effect, right? Somehow Holy Sandra crap, Bullock. crap, man. What a year for her. Yeah. I mean, that dude, what's his name, Jesse James, her husband? Yeah. He called it. Like, years ago, he's like, y'all think Sandy Bullock's over? Bullshit, you know? And <laughs> Sandy Bullock's year in a big, bad way. She bounced. Crazy. It's yeah, awesome. I mean, films like The Blind Side getting attention, I think, are a surprise to almost everybody. I bet you even to the people who made that film. I guess. I think most people were probably... I, 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 I haven't asked anybody over at Warner Bros. because that was one of theirs, but I'm sure most of them were just like, you're kidding. How much? <laughs> they like it that much? Okay. Yeah, put it out there. Football. Rah, rah. Yeah. You know? I think it caught them by surprise, and that's nice when movies can do that. It's called what they call a sleeper. Like, yeah. they weren't even expecting that, and they just kept earning and earning and that's there's something to be said for that movie a lot of people be like ah it's a TV movie hey man people are going as a filmmaker though do you look at from the other side do you think uh it would be great to have one of those. Like, because you, you can make... Of course, I want one very badly. Yeah. No. Um, <laughs> no, but you can make a conscious choice to make the kind of film that they would pay attention to. Well, you could try. Yeah. I mean, that's the thing. It's like, you could... Well, look, next up, I'm, I'm not going to say that I'm going after an Oscar, but the next movie I make is, is this movie Hit Somebody. And it's based on Warren Zevon's song that, that, um, that Mitch Albom wrote the lyrics for. It's a hockey movie. Mm -hmm. The way I see it, 
it's an award winner. It's the most beautiful movie about sports ever made, specifically about hockey. The whole movie is a valentine to the game and a valentine to Canada. If I can get 20% of what I have in my head and heart up on there, I'll own this country. They'll make right. me king. <laughs> <laughs> now, if I could do that, now, in doing that, like, I want to make this movie. And having just kind of grown up a little bit making Cop Out, I sit there going, okay, you've always for years talked about, like, oh, Oscars are bullshit and awards are bullshit and blah, 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 but this movie means something to you, and it's going to mean more if people validate it the right. way that people traditionally validate good movies. So I sat there going, oh, my God, is there some part of me that wants this award somehow? And I don't think it's it. I realize what it is. This movie, for me, it's not going to be an Oscar run. It's a hardcore cup run. Yeah. <laughs> That's what I'm calling it. You can yeah. call it whatever they want. I don't care about an Oscar. For me, I just want to be entered into the Builders category in the Hockey Hall of Fame. This that, to me, <laughs> that's the ultimate prize. The ultimate prize. <laughs> you, um, you, 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 I mean, you, you've got to hang out with Walter Gretzky. Yes, you know, the, yeah. nation, the nation's dad. That, um, was, that was amazing. I'm telling you, when I talked about being in that weed-induced coma after Zach and Miri, one of the things that pulled me out of it was Walter Gretzky. Walter Gretzky and Wayne Gretzky. I, in, you know, I've been buying DVDs for years, right? And I always got them on the shelves. And you open maybe 20% of them. The rest of them, I'm always like, one day, I'm going to collapse under my own weight and just be happy. I won't be able to do anything but lie in bed and watch television. Yeah. And in that moment in time, if I'm like, I want to watch Joanna Mann, it better be there. <laughs> So I'm working toward that day, and when Zach and Mary like went in the toilet, and I was like, I'm done with the internet. I can't ever show my face on the internet again. I locked myself in the library for months, smoked a lot of weed, watched a lot of hockey videos. The first thing I pulled off the shelf was the CBC series Hockey of People's History. Yep. And I swear to you right now, there are three things that saved my life that year. One was Hockey of People's History, the other was Wayne Gretzky and Walter Gretzky, and the third was here in Toronto being on the stage at Roy Thompson Hall. Because I came like in a place where I was feeling so low and whatnot. Went on to that stage last year, and they just gave me a big, fat, warm embrace. They didn't care about Zach and Mary not making as much as I hoped it did. Mm -hmm. They just loved the movie. They're like, what do you care? Who yeah. cares about money? And I'm sitting there going, yeah, why did I care for years? I used to be the game, the guy who would kind of uh, do a different game than everybody else. You know what I'm saying? Like, I used to kind of go where the puck was going to be, so to speak, um, instead of just chasing the puck. And yeah. with Zach and Mary, I really felt like I was chasing the puck, like trying to catch up to Judd. Yeah. And now I'm just not interested in that anymore. I'm 39. I built a legacy, dude. I don't have to catch up to nobody. <laughs> got to catch up to me. I made clerks. <laughs> <laughs> well done. <laughs> 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 what a pleasure, man. Thank you. Thank you.